Hello. We're back. Bye. My hex, my hex mart literally snarked. <laughs> what? I tried to read the line that was my my next heart literally stopped, but I did a real bad job of it. And then you just moved on. Yeah. yeah they can, oh, the text was on screen for like five minutes. <laughs> Okay, that leaves you or me, Cass, because you read my line. I'm going to read your line. Okay, that leaves you or me, Cass. Oh, you're right. <laughs> um, so you're saying, your brother. Yeah. Um, one video ago in your time, and 30 seconds ago in my time, um, my brother was a football player for most of his life. He's not dead. He's just not like a football player. Um, and he would, you know, dress me up in, like, all of his uh, pads and football gear and shit. And just like get me out of my chair, tackle me, throw me around the house. And when I would tell other people or they would walk in on this, they'd be like, "Oh my god, you you can't just do that. That's a disabled person." But like, there are contexts in which being slightly rougher with disabled people is okay and good and progressive. And obviously, the the best way to figure that out is to like ask said people. But I like how this game is kind of directly getting at that. And then I know Ronan. That's stuff you wanted to talk about in terms of trans mask shit. Yeah, so like having the perspective of Brad when we were like dealing with the nerve spike. Can what? I stop you for hot? Because I just think this is gonna launch us into um into a a, a, a light combat section. Ooh yeah. Um, so um I'm gonna hop into Cass. Okay. We can uh, chat and spat. Yeah. <laughs> so um <laughs> in the I think it was the previous stream. Um. Oh God. <laughs> I got lost between the large boulders. For the past several hours. <laughs> we're very large boulders. It was dark. <laughs> Whatever, let's keep moving. Ain't that a mood. I'm Cass. I fucked up, huh? <laughs> I should have been more watchful, should have seen this coming. Everything turned out more or less okay, but so many things could have gone wrong, and it would have been your fault. You get in the mech. You were the leader. You're supposed to be aware of shit like this. Stupid. No, don't call yourself names. You deserve kindness. No, you don't. You grab the shoulder meat and strap yourself in. A blood vessel above you pops. Starts leaking blood. You should tell Brad about that. But you failed him. Why should he care about what you think? You flip a nerve switch. Turn off a connector line. Usually take some concentrated horse piss when piloting. It's supposed to ease the pilot dysphoria over time. You don't deserve it. I really want to delve into pilot dysphoria as a concept. I hope we get more of that. <laughs> Fuck. Fine. You flip the switch back and the line starts to flow again. You whisper your name and shove your neck back into the nerve spike. Contact. You have to show yourself more kindness. It's the only way you'll make it through. It's the hardest thing in the world, but so is everything else. So you might as well try. You stand in your new body, bristle your fur, and roar. You are all or nothing. That was a new description of that, and I love that. Yep. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. Um, I'm going to look at Cass's abilities while mm -hmm. y'all, you run and share your story. Well, so it's less of a story and more of, so um, I believe it was last episode, we were talking about weakness in relation, we, like I was here, but we were talking about relation, uh, weakness in relation to Sam. And in how he talked about he cannot show any form of weakness because then that is giving these people an opportunity to exploit him. And mm -hmm. I feel like it's a slightly different relationship that Brad is sort of demonstrating with masculinity, but it's very much a, like, I need these people to take me seriously as a fighter and take me seriously as, like, these all of these what are, in our society currently, very masculine roles. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, I'm, like... No one is like no one's ever going to treat me seriously, and I I definitely see that a lot in the way that a lot of especially trans mask people like sort of deal with um, like deal with being taken seriously. I know a lot of trans mask people who struggle with that. I struggle with that. With like I'll lean into stuff um, that might not be the most positive way to talk about myself or my own masculinity 
in no small part because currently I have very little control over what my voice sounds like or how people perceive my voice and mm-hmm. how people perceive my body. Um, and so, like, because of that, I'll, like lean into things like looking appearing more threatening than I actually am in sort of an attempt to um come off as more masculine and like I I, and given like how much he hated wanting to fight but Mm -hmm. also feeling like this is like the only way that I will ever get any of these people to respect me not Mm -hmm. just Liana but everyone yeah Mm -hmm. I think really like spoke to that that was really well observed (laughs) <laughs> Sorry to sound like a teacher. You should just send this video to OSU and they'll be like, ah, yes, we'll give you the certificate. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you have to pretend to be down for things that you don't want in order for other people to be down with things that you do want. Yeah, or even, that sucks. Or even stuff like, so when I was a senior in high school, um, we had this, one of the like special days where you could like dress up as you have, however you wanted. One of our days happened to be frat boy day. And so we could all dress up like frat bros. Okay. Which was a choice. There were actually people who fully, I could not tell if they were in costume or not. Good. But um, I like borrowed all of these clothes from my brother. um, And I like, I already knew I was trans, but I wasn't out to anyone because I, (laughs) no. Um, And um, I like, felt so comfortable in the clothes because I like I was just like yes I'm wearing these things that are seen as like standard mask clothes and I feel like I'm looking like a man right now and then a friend of mine and like it's even stuff like I walked in and I talked to a friend and like one of the first things she said was you look like I need to watch my drink around you and it was <sighs> the feeling Jeez. and like I got a mix of oh yikes but I also got this feeling of like relief almost of, like, I looked like someone who is a man. And, mm-hmm. like, everyone sort of recognizes him as a man. A really shitty man, but a man. Yeah. And, like, it's not something I'm proud of. That feeling is not something I'm proud of, but it's also so because of the fact that I feel like I won't be taken seriously mm-hmm. as a trans person until I'm taken seriously as a man. Yeah, uh, the ways in which masculinity and toxic masculinity have been so equated. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, Diego did a really good video on his own channel um, that I still think about all the fucking time. Um, I forget the title of it. Maybe you remember. I can't. I can't possibly imagine which one this is. Okay. <laughs> um, but so you were talking about how essentially, and you were saying this with regards to like race and ethnicity, but I think it also applies to what Erna was saying. How there are sort of stock answers you give to sort of identity questions when you're not prepared to have a big, long, complicated conversation with somebody. And then that means that if you're not in direct relation to people that are part of X or Y minority group, you get these very simplified answers that aren't lies, like they're, they're true, but they don't tell the whole breadth of the thing because the whole breadth of the thing is really complicated. I think this is me reading out a, a piece that I wrote for the Spanish News um, magazine here on campus. Um, uh, the video, I think, was called Latinidad Mezclada, um, and I'll put a link to it and its transcript um, in the doobly-doo. So there's no one around. I ain't complaining. Um, and I tried to was when I usually arrow key. What? <laughs> oh! There is someone around! <laughs> Who wants, to, who wants to take Mad Max? I'm trying to see if I can GLaDOS voice this, but I'm not sure I can. Try it. Are you this still is the there? Safe space. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the GLaDOS safe space. Stop right there. See, that was perfect. That Mac. That's a horny Mac. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so mad at you. Are you. It does not matter. The strange man looks Cass up and down. So this is the one that will see me through. Tell me, when do you hear thunder? A few seconds after lightning? After lightning. What does it feel like to you, the lightning? Does it matter? More than anything. I'm so good. Fine. I like I like, I like the second one. I like the second one. Yeah. 
It feels like the sky is pulling itself apart. That it's shredding itself and punishing the earth for it. That we're being punished for something out of our control. So we keep it inside. And we keep it quiet. And we hope. Hope. Interesting. You almost understand. I will meet you at the edge of hope. And there you will hear it. And you will understand. Okay. <laughs> um, shall we see what's on the um scared for you? <laughs> Best of luck, buddy. I feel like uh, we're not gonna be I think I just ran into a cactus. <laughs> the real danger. <laughs> Next time on Extreme Meat Punks Forever, we're going to Jump the Shark. <laughs> Jump the <laughs> Shark. <laughs> We're, we're gonna, gonna punish those cactuses. We're gonna settle <laughs> down between enough. some cactus patches. <laughs> and enough of these cacti. <laughs> <laughs>